Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me as I continue to work on my 1989 Toyota pickup. I am very excited about today's video. As you all know, in the last video, we finished disassembling, cleaning, and prepping the engine block. So that means we are ready to start reassembling. In front of me, we have the crankshaft, the journal bearing assembly, and the fasteners that go along with it. We also have the six cylinders that have been cleaned and are ready to go back into the engine. We have the new piston rings in their package. And over here, we have the contraption we are going to use to file down the piston rings. I have my assorted tools that I'll need for the steps. And my goal in this video is to get all of these pieces into the engine block and getting a rotating assembly. Again, thank you for joining. And we will start this off by getting the crankshaft into the engine block. Hi there, this is Nabil from the future. In this part of the video, you'll notice that I have put assembly lubrication between the engine block and the journal bearing. A couple days after I finished assembling this, I was doing a little bit of reading online and I learned that putting lubrication in that location is not necessarily the best practice. Um, so I've disassembled and I've cleaned all of those surfaces with degreaser and put them back together. Um, so if you're watching this and see me putting lubrication between the journal bearings and the block, I've gone back at a later date, cleaned everything out and reassembled it, putting lubrication just between the crank and the bearing. So we'll finish getting this installed and I will catch up with you when we get started on the pistons. Now that we have the crank in, we can start working on the pistons. Um, I've already done the first one. I went through the process, making sure I wasn't gonna run into any issues and that all checked out. Uh, one thing I did um, off camera was go through and measure everything that the book required. I measured all the journal bearing diameters. I measured all the crank lobe diameters. I measured the cylinder diameters. I measured the piston diameters and everything is within spec of the Haynes book that I'm using. So I don't have to worry about things not fitting correctly or tolerance is not working out because everything so far is in tolerance. I'm working on the second cylinder now, which is actually cylinder number three. I've already measured the rings. So far, I haven't needed to file any of them down because they're all above the minimum spec that the manufacturer recommends. So I'm gonna show you the process I'm going through of measuring the gap and then how I'm getting them on the piston and then using a piston ring compressor to get the piston into the engine block. So I'm gonna move you in close and go from there. The first thing I'm doing is measuring the gap of the top piston ring, which is also known as the compression ring. To measure that gap, you need to push the piston ring down the same depth all the way around and then use feeler gauges to measure that gap in between. To make sure I'm putting the ring at the same depth all the way around, I'm using this block of wood. And then to measure the gap, I just have these feeler gauges. Then after that, I pull out my feeler gauges and I start measuring. So there's a small gap right here, taking my feeler gauge and I'm just lighting it in. Now, after I know that that gap is correct, I pull the piston ring out and then I slide the next one in and I repeat the process for all of the piston rings that go with that piston. Now that we have all of our ring gaps measured and they are all within spec, the next thing to do is to install them all onto the piston.
slide the piston in and start ratcheting it down. And now with all this together, we can now move over back to the engine block and slide this in. So excited to have these parts in, it means we're going in the right direction. And maybe in a couple months, I'll have the engine back together, made it up with the transmission back into the truck. After that happens, there is so much more work to do to this vehicle before I get it driving. But these are steps in the right direction. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. If you want updates of when I release new videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.